Hello and welcome to a new series on virtualization. Today we're going to be talking about introduction to virtualization. So let's start off by talking about what is virtualization. So virtualization is a technology that you can use to create virtual instances of computing resources. Resources like workstations, servers, storage, even networks and other physical machines that you might find in a network environment. We're going to focus in the series on virtualizing computers such as workstations and servers. Well, let's talk a little bit more about virtualization. So virtual software simulates the functions of a physical hardware and allows to run multiple virtual machines simultaneously on a physical single machine. This is the key to virtual software. It's taking that physical device and being able to run virtual machines all simultaneously at the same time. This allows us to use our physical machine in a very effective and efficient manner. Where did virtualization come from? Well, if we look back at history, IBM mainframes have been around since the early 50s. These mainframe systems are very expensive and very few businesses could afford them. So IBM introduced the idea of time sharing services. This allowed multiple customers to use the mainframe system at the same time. In the 1960s, IBM further developed this technology into what we know now know as virtualization. Although the virtualization back in the day of the mainframe isn't necessarily exactly the same as the way it's used today, but the idea is the same. And the idea is that this virtualization created a protected and isolated copy of the underlying physical hardware. This allows these virtual machines to run as if they were physical devices. Now virtualization became available on the typical PC that we use today in the late 1990s. And it's definitely widely used not only on regular PCs and servers, but you also find virtualization to be very prevalent in cloud computing. So how does it work? It works by abstracting the workload from the underlying hardware, which just simply means that the virtual machine doesn't really know that it is virtual. The software itself allows the physical hardware to be used by more than one virtual guest machine. This virtual technology sits on top of the hardware and leverages the hardware's resources like its CPU, memory, storage, networking capabilities as well. This image here is, is a depiction of a type one hypervisor. We're gonna be talking about type one and type two next. So first, the hypervisor. What is that? Well, that's the actual virtualization software. It's known as the hypervisor. And the hypervisor's purpose is to ensure that each virtual machine gets access to the resources on the physical device. It also makes sure that it has a boundary so that virtual machines don't interfere with one another. So as I mentioned earlier, there's two types of hypervisors. There's type one and type two. You typically see type one in a data center. And this type one hypervisor is also known as a bare metal hypervisor. And the reason why it's called bare metal, as the name implies, is that the hypervisor is installed right on top of the physical device. So the bare metal hypervisor isn't actually a full-fledged operating system, but you can kind of think of it that way. So rather than installing an operating system like Windows Server or Linux, when you're running a Type 1 hypervisor, you install that Type 1 hypervisor right on top of the hardware. There is no Windows Server, there is no Linux operating system there. Examples include VMware vSphere, Citrix Zen, and an open source product called KVM. And there's tons more. And there are lots and lots of other examples of type one hypervisors. Again, typically a type one hypervisor is generally seen in a data center environment. Now a type two hypervisor works in a similar fashion but is installed in a different manner. Typically you'll see a PC with an operating system like Windows or Linux, or maybe even Mac. Type 2 hypervisors are great for end users just wanting to do some testing and non-production workloads. Examples of Type 2 hypervisors can include VMware Workstation and Oracle VirtualBox. And of course, there are other Type 2 hypervisors out there. What are some of the benefits of virtualizing? Well, I listed three main benefits, although there are other benefits to virtualization. But number one is the efficient use of resources. If you've ever worked in a data center, you'll notice that the servers aren't generally doing much work most of the time. If a physical server in a data center has an application running on it, you'll typically see in many cases, CPU utilization very low throughout the day and not much going on within memory and accessing the storage. So it's quite costly to deploy an application that's dedicated on a physical machine. 
With the use of virtualization, we can take that physical computer, in this case a physical server, we can install a hypervisor on it, and we can, we can run many, many different VMs that service many different applications. This results in a significant reduction in footprint in that data center. There's less servers to cool, much less power to use. Another great benefit of virtualization is automation. You see, deploying a physical piece of hardware in a data center is quite tedious. There's a significant amount of work involved, and it does take quite a bit of time. With virtual machines, you typically can deploy the click of a mouse, and you can even automate it as well, too. Finally, I wanted to touch upon disaster recovery. Having a virtual infrastructure allows you to recover much quicker from a disaster. When that disaster strikes, it's very possible to bring up an entire infrastructure in minutes. And this significantly improves the resiliency of your applications. It also facilitates the business continuity. And if you're not familiar with that term, it just means allowing the business to continue its operations as expected. So what can be virtualized? We talked about servers. And in this series, we are going to look at using a Type 2 hypervisor to run some workloads, such as workstations and servers. But other types of resources can be virtualized as well. Storage, for example. Just like server virtualization, you can implement storage virtualization, where you have a storage infrastructure with some type of virtualization layer on it. And that virtualization abstracts the actual physical hard drives. So they're not actually accessed directly by the systems. There's also network virtualization. You can virtualize aspects of your switch environment, routers, firewalls, and even load balancers. Typically, when you want to run your own virtual network gear, you can work with your vendor to download their virtual images and run them, and you can run them on your own equipment. Finally, desktop virtualization is becoming very prevalent for business. It's a great way to offer team members a standard way to connect to a managed desktop environment. With virtual desktops, you don't have to worry about deploying software to your users. You can just have them connect to a virtual desktop from their own personal device. It could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, or even their tablet. And because they're the applications that you choose for your teammates are on a virtual desktop environment, they can easily connect from anytime, anywhere, and any device and work within that controlled and managed desktop session. So what's next in this series? As I mentioned before, we're going to continue learning about Type 2 hypervisors. We're going to be using Oracle VirtualBox. I'm going to show you how to install the product, how to configure it, create virtual guests, and then manage them. Thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you on the next one. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below.